Ah, good scene on Monday. The Knicks just making a major trade, bringing OG Ananobi to New York from Toronto to discuss, discuss that and more. Let's welcome aboard CP the franchise to talk a little bit about the Knicks. CP, happy new year. Love seeing you. Thanks for the time tonight. Mark and Nelson, happy to be on it. And Mark, you know, you and I go back to the FAN days, so happy to be on, on on a new platform. You got it, CP. Let's start it. Do you like the deal? Um, and were you sorry to see Barrett and quickly go? Very sorry to see R.J. Barrett and Emmanuel quickly go. Two homegrown players for the New York Knicks who really carved out a role for themselves over the last four to five years here. But uh, for the New York Knicks, they needed to address a need. They they were lacking in wing defense. They were lacking in efficient three-point shooting. And for O.G. Ananobi, he fits that void uh, to a T. And there were many expectations that the Knicks would go out there and make that trade for a star player. However, there were several holes that they needed to fill. And as I said, O.G. Ananobi made his New Year's Day debut at Madison Square Garden, and he was, as advertised, 17 points, six rebounds, made about three corner threes in that game, uh, proving to be a efficient bailout guy for Jalen Brunson and Julius Randle. I think that will loom large for the Knicks as they continue to hunt for the playoffs. So uh, overall, it was a good pick. I thought the deal that they paid for him uh, was really good. When you figure that, when you factor in that, they only gave up a second round pick, and they have a war chest of first round picks in order to go out there and make another splash if they need to absolutely CP where do you put the Knicks right now in the Eastern Conference well, Nelson, right now they're in seventh place. And if you guys look at the Eastern Conference standings, between four to the eighth seed, they are separated by one game. So you have a lot of parity there. It's going to be very competitive. One thing that bodes well for the Knicks is that the schedule should get a little bit easier. In January, they will have a home-heavy schedule. They play one of the uh, top road schedules in the league, the most road games in the league this year. So in January, things should be favorable for them. Now, two things will will have to come into play in order to determine if they make the playoffs or where they fit final where they finish in the Eastern Conference. Number one, it's how they fill the void left by R.J. Barrett and Emmanuel quickly. They still need uh, some more playmaking, some more scoring and even some more defense to come off of the bench. A uh, name to look out for is DeJounte Murray from the Atlanta Hawks. Uh, could Malcolm Brogdon, the reigning sixth man of the year, be available? And also, how do they compete against those teams that are hovering around them in the East? The Magic and the Pacers have improved. Those, those two teams are ahead of the Knicks right now. They still have two more games against the Miami Heat. They'll have a couple more games left against the Cleveland Cavaliers. So as you see those teams on the next schedule this season, the second half of the season, you have to f figure tiebreakers and take tiebreakers into consideration in order to determine where they finish. CP, I I've been a, a Randall defender. Um, where do you fall on Julius? Do you look at him as a guy that you would include in a deal or do you think he's a, a cornerstone piece here for the Knicks? No, he, he's, he's the real deal right now. I mean, Julius Randle is playing at an all-star level yet again, and he, he, he should be heading to his third all-star game and potentially a third all-NBA season. I mean, 28 points per game in his last 18 games. He scored 20 points in, in each of those 18 games. And, and with Julius Randle, uh, he's looking to be more of a uh, playmaker and a guy that's going to attack the basket for this team. He's opting to shoot a little bit less from the three-point line and forcing the issue in the paint. He's playing great basketball. He's leading this team. Team and for a team looking to compete in the playoffs and beyond, they're going to need Julius Randle to do so. And so I know there's a lot of speculation based on the fact that he's changed agencies and the Knicks really being dominated by uh, players with creative arts agency, CAA. But for Julius Randle, he's, he's here to stay. Yeah, Tom Thibodeau has one more year left after this season. Do you think he's the guy to get the Knicks over the top? Well, Nelson, you have to figure, you know, two playoff stints in the last three years. It looks like they could make it again this year. And if so, I think Tom Thibodeau is uh, is in the driver's seat for his coaching future. I think he will get an extension in the offseason. This was Leon Rose's hand-picked coach. He works hand-in-hand -hand with this regime, and they keep bringing in players that are Tom Thibodeau players. Tough physical, gritty players that can play defense. Uh, Jalen Brunson has come in and, and he's been his, his diamond in the rough at the point guard position. Julius Randle playing at an all-star level as well. And so Tom Thibodeau, he has his team in lockstep. And I think if, should they make the playoffs again, his, his job will be solidified. CP the franchise, creator of Knicks Fan TV. CP, uh, continued success. We appreciate it. Thanks for popping on tonight and enjoy Knicks Bulls tonight at the Garden, all right? Mark Nelson, thanks again. <laughs>